Okay, we have uh, just completed our talk about uh, compression techniques, uh, especially gzip. And now we're going to talk a little bit about backup commands. Um, uh, basically, the, the, the basic commands you use in backing up a system, tar, cpio, rsync, and, and so on. Um, but before we do this, I want to talk just a little bit about the state of the system uh, when you do do the backup. Because if the system is running a lot of jobs that are writing data to your hard disk and things, then your hard disk is going to be, the files on your hard disk are going to be changing as you attempt to pick the data up and put it onto a backup media or to make a backup. So what you'd really like is in order to make your backup, you want your system to be as quiet as possible. If I suppose if you've got a lot of jobs that are just doing read access, like you've got a web server that's just reading out data and spitting it out on web pages to people, that's not so bad. But even there, remember, you've got um, um, log files that are being written and uh, all sorts of stuff that is being written as well as, as just spinning out the web pages. You can get by with a system that is fairly active, but it's much better if your system is really quiet. The other thing is most backup commands do take quite a bit of, uh, quite a few system resources to run, and that's going to slow your system down. So if at all possible, you want to do your backups on off hours. That's why people are doing them at 1 a.m. Of course, 1 a.m. doesn't work well if most of your customers are accessing your site or in Hawaii and it's, you know, middle of the day in Hawaii when it's 1 a.m. where you are or, or the middle of the day in Kuala Lumpur. Um, so, um, um, and sometimes it's just really not possible to shut your system down completely or to shut it down much at all. Um, choose the quietest time you can get. In the old days, we used to take the systems down to um, um, to level one when we made our accesses uh, in it uh, run level one. Uh, I don't think anyone does that anymore, but uh, we used to do that. The truth is, sometimes when I do backups, I've got a scientific worksta workstation. I've got the luxury that I don't really have to be using it. So what I might, what I do do sometimes is I reboot my system. I boot the system in Nopix. That way, I am not using the disk drive at all. And I will do a copy from one disk to another disk with the system uh, completely shut down. Now, if you've got servers, that's just not practical. If you're trying to do scheduled backups, um, 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 that's probably not practical, although I suppose there'd be a way to do that. But, but doing scheduled backups make that hard. And if it's a server, you know, nowadays servers are 7 by 24. So, you know, do what you can, but consider the issue. <coughs> okay. The first two commands we're going to talk about a little bit here for doing backups are tar and CPIO, and I suppose dump restore. All of these were really designed to use with magnetic tape. Uh, they all work quite well for things other than magnetic tape, and we use all of them to this day. But they were all really designed in the day and age of magnetic tape. Uh, the book talks about tar first. Um, I think I'm going to talk about CPIO first, because CPIO was the first backup command. Uh, it was done as part of AT&T Unix from Berkeley Labs. And uh, later, uh, TAR was developed by uh, part of AT&T Linux from AT&T Bell Labs. And uh, later, TAR was developed as part of Berkeley Unix. Now, um, 
one of the problems I do have with these is that there's a lot of different versions of both TAR and CPIO out there. And they're not always the same. And sometimes some of the things I'll say may not be right for every version. Um, but this is basically the traditional approach to these commands. And, and why people use what they do use, even if maybe they don't have to do it that way today. Um, um, but this is the tradition. And this is the way it is. it works on many, many systems. OK, the first command, CPIO. Well, the CPI, CP is for the copy command. And um, IO is, well, I guess for doing copies of I.O. Um, CPIO was probably the first uh, backup command. It was really designed with the idea that you were going to be putting things onto tape. Um, CPIO tends to be hard to use. I do not like to use it particularly. It's difficult to use, usually, when I get it working the way I want it. I um, make that part of a script. Um, CPIO is a little bit painful. And we're just going to go over a few of the things you can do with CPIO. So why would I use a long, painful command? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Traditionally, CPIO can, um, a stream from CPIO can be broken up into pieces like you need to do if you're going to put um, um, put it on tape. And it takes multiple tapes. So if you're backing up a 3 gigabyte, well, say a, a, a 10 gigabyte um, uh, file system, and your tape drive will only hold 2 gigabytes of information, then you're going to have to, br the CPIO will basically um, can be used. So you put a tape in the tape drive. It goes to the end of the tape. It says, put, in the, put the next tape in. You put the next tape in. It goes to the end, and so on and so forth. TAR, a TAR cannot do this um, now. The truth is, when I read the manual, I don't see how to do this with CPIO. But I know, but most versions of CPIO can do this. And I've uh, used CPIO to do this on many, many, many different Linuxes, or uh, different Unixes, including um, um, IBM AIX, um, SCO Unix. I believe SEO Xenix, um, Sun Sunos, and probably others as well. Um, Atar was not able to do that. It, it looks to me like Linux may be running a version of Tar that can break things into uh, different tapes. Um, I have seen such versions, but traditionally, TAR cannot jump tape boundaries. CPIO can. The other thing is that CPIO can back up every file on your file system. TAR cannot. In particular, TAR is a great command for backing things up. It's easy to use. It's smooth. It backs up almost everything you want, except TAR, at least traditionally cannot back up any of your special files. Anything under slash DEV, tar misses. Tar can't back up named pipes. Personal experience with that, where I put named pipes into strange areas. Tar cannot, basically, tar cannot back up any of your special files. CPIO can and will. Um, so the tradition has been to use CPIO on the root system and tar every place else. And then somebody like me writes a program that uses a named pipe someplace else. And um, I learned not to do that. Um, OK. Um, so let's look a little bit at CPIO here. Let's go over here. 
Now, all of these, while you can put things onto tape, a tape's just a file, so you can put things onto a file too. And the way TAR and CPIO are usually used today is to make archive files. Let's take a little look at what we have in this directory here. We've got a few um, um, directories, and one of those directories here is called summer um, whatever, um, summer 2011. Let's cancel this, uh, let's kill the CPIO file, and let's see what we would need to um, catch that as a CPIO uh, animal here. I'm going to go and just bring back my command. And this is the way CPIO is usually used. This is a very simple use of CPIO. But the first thing is, in order to use CPIO, you have to name the files that are going into the archive. As an example, let's see, I don't want to use this, so I will just echo that like that. As an example, if I would want to do CPIO, um, the minus O basically says to that I'm using CPIO to build an archive. If it was a minus I, it would say I'm using CPIO. I'm going to read the archive and copy, extract everything out of the archive. And I believe it's a minus P for being a pass through which is really using CPIO more like a copy command. Um, also a valuable thing to do. The V here is just says spit out um, copies of all the files that get copied onto the archive, as, or the names of the files that get copied on, onto the archive as you copy it onto the archive. OK, here we're going to say ttt.cpio. And, well, it uh, doesn't work very well. OK, well, the reason that doesn't work very well is what I have to do now is I have to give it the names of the files that I want copied onto the archive. So let's give it this name. And let's give it this name. And then I'll do a control D to uh, end the input. OK. And what I see is I have the CPIO. Um, um, there's my archive. And that, that's basically the way I can make an archive. Now, it's a big pain getting the names of all these files. The way I have to do that is to use the find command. So suppose I want to make a CPIO of all the files in um, the directory summer. I would use uh, find summer. Um, well, that will give me all the directories. Let's just take a look at that file. That gives me lots of file names. Now, it ends up this guy here is just a, directory, a subdirectory name. It turns out that subdirectories are kind of like the find command puts them in the wrong order. So there's a special option on the find command called minus depth that just simply changes the order of the directories. And that's because I've got to be able to tell CPIO when it recovers the files to create directories as needed. And it ends up being a lot nicer if I put the directory names at the back. Um, so that option on the find command is just simply for, um, um, is, is just simply there to use it as a pipe to the find command. OK, we're going to come back, and I'll show you exactly the way to put in this find command to make it work. Um, and um, I'll be back in just a minute here. OK, bye-bye. Mm,